Hey guys, Tony SVT, and today I'm going to be explaining the finer points of the data acquisition system in Project Cars. The data acquisition system is a fantastic tool to use uh, to record your footage and then go back and look at your data and make adjustments to the car afterward. Uh, and you can start out uh, top left, you've got your uh, AF meter. Then on the inside of that, you've got your RPM and the gear ratio for the current gear that you're in. Then you can go back, uh, look at your gears, and say, you know what, I want first to be a little bit longer, so you make it a little bit taller. Uh, second's too long, so you want to bring it in and you want to be able to get to third quicker. Uh, you can make those adjustments and figure out where you're more comfortable. As you can see, just to the right of that, you've got your brake indicator for when you're on your brakes. Then you've got your gear, your speedometer, uh, your steering wheel location is right underneath the both of those. And then the green bar to the right of that is of course your throttle position sensor. It's gonna let you know how far you are on the throttle. You can see where you're feathering, you can see where you're full power, and you can see where you need to let off in some turns because maybe you're spinning like so. Uh, to the right of that, you've got your horsepower indicator and your torque indicator. To the right of that, you've got your session best and your total time, how long you've been on track, and what was your best lap. To the right of that, you've got your G-meter. Uh, this G-meter only goes up to 4 Gs. Most G-meters will actually go to 5. I'm not sure why they limited this one to 4, but odds are, unless you're slamming a wall at top speed, you're not going to hit 4 G anyway. Now, the coolest part about the data acquisition system in this game is how it shows tire wear, temp, uh, your bump height, travel, and your, your ride height, brake temperature, uh, percentage of tire wear, which is awesome. I, I absolutely love it. Now you've got your, your heat indicators for your tires. Uh, on top of your tire, it shows you the inside, outside, and middle temperature of your tire on, on top. And then underneath, you'll see those those numbers bouncing around. Uh, those are going to be your wear indicators and digits. And the yellow circles that show up are showing a visual aid on how much wear you're you're putting on your tires. Instead of having to look at each individual number or whatever, you can see those yellow circles popping up and saying, "Hey." this is what's going on with this tire at this current time. Another handy feature is your brake temperature. Uh, a lot of cars, you, you really want to get your brakes up to temp before you run them. Uh, otherwise, you, you know, you'll get no brakes at all going into a high speed turn. Or if you're overheating, you'll get a lot of brake fade. Uh, ben will come over the speaker and let you know when your brakes are overheating and say, you need to scrub off some of that heat and the tight turns. Uh, just means let off the throttle a little bit. Don't uh, don't go in there as hot as you normally would and then hammer the brakes. Kind of let off the throttle and slow down a little bit. Let the engine slow the car down. Maybe downshift a little bit uh, to bring some of that speed off so your brakes aren't getting as hot going into the turns. The high speed stuff is usually okay. Uh, such as small turns like this where you just go through and you're just kind of tapping the brake. But this turn here you'll need to scrub. Uh, what's really nice about this is uh, you can also see downforce indication. Uh, you can look at the height of the, of the car right now, and it's it's bouncing between zero four zero five. But watch when I go into this turn when I'm hard on brake. Watch that height come up. That means that the the downforce of the car is what's bringing me lower to the ground. And what this can tell you is, hey, I'm getting too low. I either need to adjust my right height or I need to adjust my downforce. Maybe I'm getting too much downforce and it's bringing me too low. Or if you're not getting as low to the ground as you'd like, you can go back and up your downforce or lower your right height to get a more comfortable feel for the car. I usually like to ride with high downforce 
simply for the fact that I like to go through the turns a little bit faster, especially in Formula B and Formula A. The bad part about Formula B and Formula A, the cars are very twitchy on the throttle. You've got a lot of power at your fingertips. So when you come out of a turn, don't hammer the throttle. You need to, you need to slowly roll into the throttle or else you're gonna get sideways. And it's very easy to do. Even when you're in a straight line, you need to be careful and watch what your rear end's doing. Uh, I suggest upping your rear downforce a bit to keep more pressure on those rear tires. That's my personal opinion. You, you can race how you like. If you like to throw it around in turns a little bit, then by all means. But, ladies and gentlemen, this was my review of the data acquisition system. I hope you find it helpful. And I hope to see you guys in my next review next week where I'm going to be going over tips and tricks on different tracks. I'm going to be putting out a track review once a week and we'll be at a different track with different cars going over different setups and tuning ideas that I, I've, I've found interesting. So ladies and gentlemen, take care and I'll see you next week.